Jody and I were friends for a long time. We used to play tennis at the park across the street from her house. We were on those courts practically every day after school. I've always been a real good singles player, and I've won a lot of matches in girls' singles. Amber and I were doubles partners, and we were a pretty awesome pair. We won the girls' doubles title in the parks and rec tournament a couple of years in a row. It was always a big dream of ours to be the top doubles team in the league. It's one of the best junior teams in the state. There was a lot of tough competition for the junior team. I couldn't believe how many girls showed up for tryouts. To make the team, we each had to win a certain number of singles matches against others trying out. And I made the cut no problem. I've never really been a good singles player and was pretty nervous during the tryouts. I lost about half of my matches. To make the cut, I had to win this last match. I was hoping to get a girl who couldn't play too well, you know. I couldn't believe it when I drew Jody's name. It was so weird to be playing my best friend and doubles partner in such an important match. Jody wasn't playing like herself. I kept hitting the shots out, and she kept calling them in. I was playing lousy, but I kept winning. I beat Jody in the match 6-4, 6-2, and made the team. To this day, she's never really come out and told me she threw the match. I guess she didn't have to. You know, I don't see why it's such a big deal that I let Amber win. I mean, she was my best friend, and we'd always wanted to be doubles partners on the team. Isn't that what friends are for? I could help her make the team, and that's what I did. Doesn't this happen all the time? I got off to a really bad start on the team. I kept feeling like I didn't deserve to be there. It kept bothering me that if my best friend had to cheat for me to make the cut, I mustn't be any good. I don't know what started to fall apart first, our doubles team or us being friends. By mid-season, I quit the team. I didn't really get it, you know? I mean, it helped Amber make the team, but instead of being happy about it, she just seemed to stop trying. And she acted really weird whenever I saw her. But since she quit the team, we hardly ever see each other anymore. I thought that I was being a good friend by helping her out. But now, I'm not so sure. Who has the problem in this situation, Jody or Amber? I think that they both did because both of them cheated. And even though one didn't cheat as severely as the other, but and also both of them lost their friendship. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why didn't Amber, you know, say, hey, look, I know you, you threw the match for me? She should have, when she thought something was weird, she should have said, said so right then. Because if she, the more she let it go on, mm -hmm. the guiltier she felt and the worse it got. And then after a while, I'm sure she just, you know, she didn't even want to think about it anymore. What other options did Amber have? I mean, she didn't stop the match. So what other options would she have had after the match? She did quit the team. She could have quit the team? She did quit the she team. She did quit the team. But, but I'm saying, you, you know, in order for, for Amber to help this situation out, what could she have done? She, she, she could have talked to, jo talk to Jody, and she could have asked her what her reasoning was for cheating for her and why she cheated for her. So that, she, so that both of them could understand how the other person was feeling. That way it wouldn't put a strain on their relationship. Okay, so she could have talked to Jody. Yeah. She also could have told the coach. She could have told the coach. Okay. But if she would have told the coach, wouldn't that get Jody in trouble? It yeah. might. She don't but you don't want to get Jody in trouble because, um, first of all, her intentions wasn't to uh, hurt Amber. It was to help her. Mm -hmm. And then, for me, they should have just talked it over. That's, that's what they should have done. Just them two just talking together mm -hmm. and then made a solution between the two what you know they should do about it mm -hmm. but um but telling the coach on her that that would kind of hurt both of them yeah but what if jody that then jody would never really see anything the matter with it i mean if she never got if an adult or someone never told her mm -hmm. that what she did was wrong then she never would have she could have she could have done it again and hurt more people right if you cheat for a friend, is it any different than, than cheating to get something for yourself? Um, it's different. It's not better. It's yeah. different. It's not better. Yeah. yeah. They don't. People wouldn't look at you as being as self-centered mm -hmm. if you cheated for a friend and cheating for yourself, but I think it's mm -hmm. just as bad. Do you think it's okay to cheat for a friend? Mm -hmm. no. 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 In the long run, 
or yeah. maybe even in the short run, mm -hmm. you always end up hurting someone yeah. just about when you cheat. Yeah. And more than even, just the two of you. Yeah. yeah the, the, they didn't get on the, someone else on the team didn't that, get on the team. Right. Jody wouldn't have cheated right. and so, Amber wouldn't have won. So it's wrong either way, whether mm -hmm. you're cheating for yourself right. or cheating for someone else. If you allow someone to cheat for you, I mean, is that the same thing? Yeah. If someone cheats for you, <laughs> you'll never get those skills yourself, and eventually you'll need them, and you'll really be stuck. Yeah. Okay. I don't even think she was really thinking of Amber's ability when she did what she did. Okay, okay. well, I want to go back to the point that Jessie was making. She, basically, she said that it's wrong either way, whether mm -hmm. someone cheats for you or whether you cheat for someone else. It's cheating, no matter. I mean, you can say it's like, you know, trying to get around whatever mm -hmm. or say, well, they didn't really cheat. It's it's like that. They cheated. No matter what they did, they cheated. You can't yeah. rationalize it. Right. Like she pointed out in the video, she, she didn't really realize that she was cheating. She said, you know, isn't this what friends do? Right. Doesn't this kind of thing happen all the time? And it, it does happen a lot, but that doesn't mean it's a good it's thing. Right. That doesn't bad make it right. things happen a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So that doesn't make it right, whether it happens a lot or not. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, great. Well, we're going to move on and watch another story um, about Matt, who's got a problem with lying. When I was where you are now, I can't believe the things I got away with. I hardly ever did any work on my own. I'd lean on my buddies to let me borrow their homework. I'd kind of rotate them around. I'd lean on one for a little while, then I'd go to the next one till he got sick of it, then I'd go on to the next. The thing I had going for me was I was a really good liar. I could get anybody to believe in almost anything. I'd almost find somebody to help me out. Anyway, I had a few lines going. Like, um, oh yeah, <clears throat> I had this one. <clears throat> it was like, uh, well, my dad uh, lost his job, you know, and I didn't want to mention it to you, but now I'm having to work after school and on Saturdays and stuff. <sighs> and I don't have time to do my homework, so I was wondering if I could borrow yours, and uh, I'll give it back to you later. And I usually fell for it. And I had this other one about my kid brother being sick and how I felt really bad and everything. I think I got a few papers done with that one. Teachers fell for it, too. Everyone was really sympathetic. But then out of the blue, something really weird happened. There was this teacher, Mr. Jackson. He was my algebra teacher. And I guess he checked up on me because I could never get away with anything in his class. Anyway, it came down to this term project on the computers. I got paired with this kid, Barry. He was like the smartest kid in the class or something. I think I used the one about my kid brother being sick. And anyhow, Barry did most of the work on the project. I got away with hardly doing anything, and we both got an A. So shortly after we turned it in, Mr. Jackson comes up to me in the hall. He said he was very proud of our excellent work, and he was very pleased with the job we'd done on the project. <clears throat> and he said that he wanted to make Barry and me what he called peer tutors. <laughs> I totally freaked. I mean, no way was I going to crash and burn in front of my friends. I started trying to lie my way out of it instantly. But he didn't fall for it. So eventually he had me in a corner, and I had to admit that Barry had done most of the work, and I'd hardly done any. I kind of got the impression he'd already figured that out, though. But he thanked me for being honest, and then he really threw me a curve. He said he still wanted me to be a peer tutor. He said he was going to help me out a few mornings a week, get me ready for the tutoring sessions, and then let me go to work. And that's what happened. Well, the first tutoring session went a lot better than I expected. I liked it. <laughs> and the next sessions after that just went better and better. There were all these kids depending on me to help them with their work. I felt responsible. I felt weird. Good, but felt kind of weird. I liked it, though. Now, I think about how I could still tell a good lie to get out of doing something. But I don't because I like being involved. With all that lying I was doing, I was just fooling myself anyway. And now, I don't think learning is stupid anymore. Why do you think Matt wanted so much to tell you his story? He, he maybe thought that he realized what he did was wrong and he wanted others to learn from it so they wouldn't repeat his mistakes. That's a good point. He wanted to be an example and show what went wrong from lying. Mm -hmm. and maybe, wanted, maybe wanted to get it off his chest. He also probably knew there are a lot of other kids who go around and do that, and he wanted them to realize that it's fun to learn, that it can be fun. It doesn't always have to be boring. And okay. 
stupid. Right. Well, why do you think he had to lie so much? Well, because just he didn't like working, and like one little lie led to another. Mm -hmm. So you think it's just a snowball effect? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he was used to it, and you know, why stop lying now? He's been doing it, you know, all his life. It's the easiest way out, I mean. Yeah. If you, you know, he could lie or he could spend a few hours doing his homework or doing his work. So he picked lying. Do you right. think that was the only thing that he could feel good about, mm -hmm. about himself? Maybe. And, just... and plus, when you lie, like, so much like he did, it's mm -hmm. going to become a habit for you. It's going to be a hard habit to, to stop, To You can't just say, OK, I'm going to stop lying. It, it's almost like a disease. It's hard to stop lying. Maybe his self-esteem was so bad, he really thought he couldn't do the work. So he thought he couldn't do the work, Maybe. but he was good at lying, so he would just lie to, mm -hmm. to get out of it. Okay. Plus, Mr. Jackson really, I think he said Mr. Jackson really knew that he was lying. And, I mean, you know, who knows what could have happened if he would have just kept on lying. Mr. Jackson was going to make him be a peer tutor right. no matter what. Did, did Matt want to be a peer tutor? No. 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 Okay. <laughs> Why do you think Mr. Jackson insisted that he become a tutor, even though he said he didn't do the work? He knew that it would start him, uh, and that he, on the sort of, the road to telling the truth. He believed in him. He, he must have known that Matt had some potential, and that he really could be a peer tutor. He just wasn't using it, and, and didn't know how to show that. And he also knew that being a peer tutor would be fun for him, and it would show him that learning didn't have to always be, you know, just sitting down and taking notes. It, it could be more fun than anything else. Why did Matt change? Why, why did he stop lying? Mr. Jackson, he said, thank you for telling the truth. Yeah. I mean, maybe that, you know, that made him feel good. Somebody told him, thank you for telling the truth. Mm -hmm. So instead of Mr. Jackson getting down on him... He, w he rewarded him right. by right. congratulating oh, him. Great. Yeah. And the truth will set you free. <laughs> <laughs> what effect did, did the tutoring sessions themselves have on Matt? He realized he could help people. Yeah. And that helped him help himself. It made him feel responsible mm -hmm. and like he was important in something because before he didn't really have to be important in anything because he it was other people that he depended on, and now people were depending on him. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, what might have happened to, to Matt if he hadn't, uh, if, if his buddies hadn't given him their homework? If his friends wouldn't have felt, fallen for all of his lies, he wouldn't be a liar, and also he, he would have learned things that he had to know. Like with cheating, in the end, his friends, they tried to help him. But in the end, they were hurting him much more in the long run. Okay. Mm -hmm. So his buddies would actually have helped him more if they hadn't given him his homework. Yeah, yeah. that's right. What did Matt, Matt mean when he said that he didn't think learning was stupid anymore? It's kind of like trying a new food, you know? You always say, oh, that looks so bad, or oh, that smells so bad. But sometimes then after you try it, mm -hmm. it, it tastes really good. And it might have been learning, you know, everybody said, oh, it's so uncool, it takes so much time, or whatever. Yeah. But after he tried it, it he felt rewarded, mm -hmm. and he had higher self-esteem. Right. Okay, well, great. Well, we're going to move on now and, and watch the story about Don and Kate and a little problem of stealing. One afternoon, my older sister Kate picked me up from school. The car was full of old clothes and stuff from the attic to take to the thrift shop. When we got there, Kate and I got out to take the stuff around back to drop off. While we were waiting for someone to help us, Kate started looking at an old coat someone had left by a pickup bin. She found something in the pocket. She took it out. It was a gold bracelet. It was real shiny, like real gold. I told Kate that somebody must have left it in the pocket by accident, but she wouldn't listen to me. To me, it was like finding something that somebody had thrown out in the trash. I mean, you know how people throw out their clothes and furniture right out on the streets with their garbage? Well, what's the difference? We hardly said anything to each other on the way home in the car. Later that night, I went up to her room and asked her if maybe she should take it back. All she could say were things like, we give great stuff to the thrift shop all the time and they'll never miss this. She couldn't see that she'd done anything wrong. I think Don was pretty upset with me. It went on for a couple of weeks. 
I remember one night at dinner, Mom noticed the bracelet and asked me where I got it. I told her I borrowed it from Cindy. Mom said to be very careful with it because she said it looked expensive. Don just got up from the table and left. I went up to my room. I was really mad at Kate for lying to Mom about this bracelet. It was bad enough that she'd taken it. Now I had to listen to her lie about it. I mean, she was my big sister. I was trying to figure out whether I should tell Mom when there was a knock on my door. I didn't realize when I took the bracelet that so many people would be asking me where I got it. I had no idea that I would have to spend so much time just telling lies, trying to cover up what I did. I finally told Don that I realized that I had sort of stolen it and had to take it back. I went with Kate the next day to return the bracelet. The clerk said he knew the lady who it belonged to. He called her and said she'd be right over. The lady didn't ask any questions about how I'd gotten it, thank goodness. It turned out that the bracelet wasn't solid gold, but it did have a lot of sentimental value. It's weird. I had this really good feeling inside about returning it. I mean, it's really hard to explain, but it just felt good. The lady offered to give me a reward, but I just told her, no thanks. So is what Kate did the same thing as stealing, or was it different? It was stealing. It was stealing. It was, yeah. it was stealing. It was stealing because stealing is taking something that's not yours, and it, it wasn't hers, and she didn't know whose it was, and she took it and played it off as if it were hers, so mm -hmm. that's stealing. Okay. Was, but she, she kind of looked at it as taking something from the thrift shop, you know, like this person was going to give it to the thrift shop, but really what happened is they left it in there by mistake. Mm -hmm. So she, she looked at it as, you know, taking something from the thrift shop it when it was really stealing. Plus, from the but even if it were still taking it from the thrift shop, that would be stealing because if the person had given it to the thrift shop, it was then theirs. It right. wasn't, it, yeah. nowhere did it become hers. It exactly. was plain out stealing. She just rationalized it. Okay. That's the only difference. Mm -hmm. Another way she rationalized it is she said that, uh, that her family gave things to the thrift shop. It was like, you know, I'll give you something, you give me something. That's how she rationalized mm -hmm. it, but it wasn't like that. Okay. Well, what kind of effect did her stealing this bracelet have on her brother Don? Well, her, she was sort of the role model for Don, mm -hmm. so he, he probably felt really angry. This is my knight in shining armor and she did something wrong, mm -hmm. so that might make him depressed. Plus, he was pretty morally strong, so he, yeah. he thought, you know, he just knew it was wrong, right. that this isn't something you should do. Okay. Do you think Don really looked up to Kate? Yes, yes. Yes. What else did he do to help influence Kate? He tried to tell her, it's not yours to begin with. Mm -hmm. But, go on. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's like she was listening, but um, it did have an effect on her towards the end okay. when she thought about it. Mm -hmm. He showed her the, also sort of the trouble that she got in, convinced her when people started asking questions. Mm -hmm. She realized, hey, uh, I'm maybe in a little bit deeper than I should be, mm -hmm. so I'll just get rid of it, or I'll give it back, or maybe she just realized it was wrong. Well, Kate said that she told her mother that she borrowed the bracelet. Why did she tell her that? Like, yeah. like if she said um, she got it from a department store, they want to know what store, how much it cost, how did you get this much money, mm -hmm. you know, and what the price was and all this stuff, and it's just easy to say, I borrowed it. How did Kate feel when she returned the bracelet? Well, she felt she felt, she felt good. Mm -hmm. Higher self esteem. She felt proud of her brother and her proud of you know what they did. Proud of him for standing up yeah. for what's right, mm -hmm. and proud of herself for doing what's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think and you're right. It really, when something like that happens, it's like having a burden lifted off mm -hmm. of you. Because whenever you do something wrong, you feel I know I feel guilty about it, and it just it hangs on to me, and I I can't be happy about any other any other things around me. Yeah. And so you could tell. And she said, um, the woman said, ask her if she wanted a reward, you know, and she said, no, I, I've already got one, yes. so. Well, why do you think Don knew more than Kate did about what was right and what was wrong? Well, it's probably older, well, the older you get, the more you learn to compromise and, you know, like, she, she sort of stole it, not really. Mm -hmm. And Don was probably more set in his ways. Why did uh, Kate 
bring Don along when she returned the bracelet? He, she probably wanted him to see, you know, this is what you're supposed to do. You're right. This is what I should do. This is what you're supposed to do. I'm your older sister. I mean, w what kind of role model would I be if I just kept it? I mean, mm -hmm. I'm going to show you, you know, you were right. I was wrong, and this is the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Do the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> this has been a lot of fun. You guys uh, think you'd be interested in doing something like this again? Yeah. 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 yeah, it is, isn't it? Well, great. Well, maybe we'll get together again next week and talk about something else. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs>